Have a great day. I love you. Bye. Say bye. Thank you. Bye, babe. Bye. Love, you. love you. Have a good day. What's up guys, welcome to the vlog. It's Tuesday. Everybody is out of the house, except for Maverick. He's still in the house. Bye Maverick. There's some stuff that we're, uh, that we're dealing with right now. Stuff I wanna talk about. We actually debated on talking about it, Priscilla and I did, as far as talking about it, you know, in the vlog. Because we are very positive people, and the vlog is very positive, but I don't wanna be unreal. I feel like it certainly makes us more relatable to other families when you see the you know the challenges that that we face as well but we still approach it with a positive note so this challenge um i am positive that it's it's a tough one we will talk about that later but right now i've got to get through the work day How's your day? Mine was good. I just dropped Abby off and now I'm headed into the Duval County School Board building. That's where we hold our Duval County Council PTA meetings. So I'm headed in there. I have to give my report on our leadership workshops that um, we had this past weekend. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna go advocate for our kids and their education and hope that we can make a difference. So if you have a PTA, I strongly suggest you get involved. Um, it's not, it's not clickish. It's not, we're not baking home goods every day. That's not what our PTA is about. It's not what it's supposed to be about. This is for advocating for education for our kids and making sure that People are following the laws and getting laws changed to better their education. So if you can get involved in your local units, um, please do that because we need more moms and, and dads out there, grandparents, community leaders, anybody we can get um, to, to keep our PTA going strong. Yesterday I got new tires for my car. Today, I'm getting an oil change. So, fun times. PTA meeting went awesome. We had a person come in and talk about breast cancer awareness. So, that was really cool. You're looking so stylish. <laughs> Hi. So, you want to sit down and have a chat? Yeah. Okay. I normally do these chats on my own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Welcome to my chat. Thanks. You're welcome. It's good to have you. It's good to be here. <laughs> first things first, we got Abigail's picture back from the fair. You know, they uh, they leave it on display until the fair's over. Is the fair over? It is. Yes, the fair's over. That's that why we got fair. it back. So we got her little, her ribbon, and we got her, her painting that she did. So proud of that. Do we get Isaiah's back yet? Yeah. Huh. It's called Funshine Multicolor Abstract. Cool. So that's going to go right there on the wall. We're going to put that up with the rest of the moss art. And she got a $5 check for winning first place. Isn't that cool? $5. <laughs> she won money for art. This is, this is, that's just cool. Isaiah won $22. Oh, for everything all together? Yeah. That's really cool. Yep. So our little chat, you know, what we wanted to talk about, we actually debated on talking about it because it's, it's, you know, hard stuff and it's real stuff, but... That's one thing that we've always promised is that we would be real with you guys. Uh, we are very positive people, and you guys have called us out on that a lot. And you appreciate how positive we are, uh, but that's not—it's not being fake. We're just positive. You know, we we look at the brighter side of things oftentimes. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked about being able to hold Abigail's hand um, in the last vlog. You know, you don't—you wouldn't normally get to do that because she's twelve. So, you know, we always look for the brighter side of things, and, and we just always have. So that's the kind of people we are, but we do want to share with you guys the reality of some things, the difficult parts that we do face, and that's what this is. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with SIB, with it, which is self self-injurious behavior. If you're not, 
That's what it is. It's where someone uh, injures themselves um, with the behavior. Abigail does it when she gets mad. Um, we've talked about her biting her arms before. Um, there's another one that she does, and it's part of a stimming behavior, and it's from gagging. Um, Abigail will gag herself repeatedly, and we've talked about this the last couple of vlogs because it's been increasing and becoming uh, becoming a thing again. You know, we've we faced this before. We extinguished the behavior, and now it's back. Just like most of her stims, they go for full circle. You know, they come and go. Yeah. Um, some we wish more than others, but uh, this is one of those that's really, really difficult for her and for us as a family, her caregivers, and for her teachers, uh, her therapists. Everybody is involved on this one. Abigail will essentially gag herself until uh, she gets to the point where she'll vomit. And she and she likes the sensation or needs that sensation in her throat. Now, we've talked about yelling recently. And Priscilla and I think we're both on the same page that the yelling and the gagging go hand in hand. There's a... The pica also increases. Right. So mouthing and so edible So it's like uh, edible anything objects. with her mouth it yeah. has increased. Um, and so there's nothing... The unfortunate thing is there's nothing that we can give her that is as highly reinforcing as right. that sensation. We don't have a, re a replacement uh, sensation for this stem. You know, there's nothing that we can do that's going to replace that gagging um, or even the yelling for that matter. You know, right. we talked about sour candy in the last one. Anything, any like big time pow that we can give her, we will because that, you know, it may, it may tickle her throat or it may you know if we we do pressure on her jaw you know when when she's needing that um but but there's really nothing that we can replace this specific behavior with so the method that we've created that we've come up with uh using her therapist and her teachers um the professionals in her life uh, i don't know if you guys have ever seen them but when you put an iv in a kid's arm they'll put no nos on on their arms it's a it's a restraint you know it's a you can kind of shape it the way you want and it goes over the arm and it keeps them from being able to bend their arm to get to the IV or whatever, you know, they have their auction on auction in or something like that. It keeps them from being able to pull it out. So we took that idea. We kind of developed it into something that was uh, bigger, you know. Well, we used uh, that for a while when yeah, he was younger. Right, when she was much younger. But now she can... She she, then can, she can crush she no just, nos. Yeah, yeah, she bent it. Yeah, because so. they do bend a little bit. So she bent the no nos, and and she was like, no, no, no nos, <laughs> and that was it. So we had to we had to upgrade. So the idea here is that we are keeping Abigail from bending her arm up and getting up to her mouth to gag herself. So we've got to keep her arm uh, to where you know basically she's in this area the whole time. Uh, you know, she can still move her move her arms around and reach things and manipulate things, but she cannot get her hands to her mouth. Of course, that restricts movement in other areas, which sucks, uh, but this is a protocol. Just like any other behavior that we faced, we're on a strict protocol for this. Um, so the device that we use, basically PVC material. It's a PVC tube, and it is uh, significantly larger than the diameter of Abigail's arm. That way she still has you know, slight movement inside the tube without hyperextending her elbow or anything like that. We wanted her to be as comfortable as possible right. uh, while having to do this, you know, because obviously it sucks. You can't bend bend your elbow and do things. So she kind of like tin mans around the house the whole time. And and it sucks to, you know, to witness when she's, she's trying to, you know, communicate and she's trying to sign and she signs pretzel like this. And um, it just sucks. It sucks all around. We hate doing it, but... But the idea here is to protect her because repeated vomiting and, you know, that can damage. Uh, oh, it could damage. I mean, it's like someone who has bulimia. So vomiting, um, you know, the acids in your stomach, I mean, it's it does serious damage on your body when you're doing it repeatedly. repeatedly and that's what she was doing. So, um, you know, and it's not just like the easy thing to say would be, well, don't let her do it. Sitting next to her the entire time she's awake during the day and blocking that behavior wasn't working. We tried that. Yeah. Um, she continued with the behavior. So that didn't work at all. So then it became, you know, it started as a stem, but then we were giving her attention. We weren't purposefully giving her attention. You're not looking at her. You're simply, you know, if she were to put her hand up, like like she was going to gag, we would block, but not look at her or anything. We would just block. But it's still, for her, that was attention seeking. And Abigail's always been one to, like, push buttons and yes. try to get us to react to things. So she would actually sit there and look at us. And, and act like she was going to and just touch her mouth with her hand uh, to get us to interact with her. And, and you know, so it didn't work. And then in the car, so we could pick her up from school, 
and she'd be on the middle of I-95, and Abigail's throwing up in the back seat because she's, she she's knows making herself gag. I can't do anything because mm-hmm. I'm driving. It was like every day we were we were we were dealing with that, having, having to clean up the car, and um, you know, it was damage to Abigail's teeth and her throat, and uh, it's not something I would wish upon anybody. So restraints suck. You know, it's kind of one of those things, especially as parents, you never want to have to do to your children. And it's not fun. Obviously, you don't want to do that to your child, but rest assured Abby is not bothered by it. Yeah, that's that's a it's one of those things it's like I know I know it's not convenient for her and it's not, you know, she can't do as much, so they're probably irritating, but it's but she's but like she, you go to put them on her and, and, and she and she's puts like, her hand out okay. cuz she knows. Okay, so that's part 1. Part 1 is the extinction. There is let me let me show you this paper. So this is the restraint log. This is all the times and dates that we have to put the restraints on Abigail. Um, we do it for 10 minutes. That is according to the criteria that we all decided on, you know, with her therapist and with her teachers, with the professionals at her school. Um, you know, we go off of this and they, I mean, they take note of everything. Um, was there any injury to anyone? Uh, was there any vomiting with a gagging? Um, you know, anything, everything and anything goes on this paper because all that is then later put into a graph and we can see if what we're doing is working because we're looking for a decrease in the behavior overall. Pretty scientific. So we fill that sheet out. The respite workers fill the sheet out. Uh, the therapists do. Everybody fills that out and puts the data in there when when the restraints have to be used. And I know when I say restraints, you're probably thinking some like terrible medieval type of straight jacket device, but it's it's actually this super cute hoodie. It's a Tommy hoodie, and uh, it, it was getting a little small for her, so this is what we went with. But it's PVC in the sleeves, like that. She just puts the hoodie on, slides the sleeves in. You know, she's got, so it goes up to about here. So she's got about this much of her arm sticking out um, of the tubes. It keeps her elbow from bending too much. She still moves her shoulders fine, uh, but it works. And it works really, really well. You know, we can just throw it on her and 10 minutes are up and we unzip it and take it off. I'm done. The first part of that, the first part of the restraints is uh, extinction of the behavior. So we first talked about it with her, with her school and they were talking about doing it for five minutes. Basically like, up. Oh, you you do that you get these put on you know that's kind of like that would be like punishment okay according to you know ABA therapy terminology that is a that is a punishment for behavior we up that time because the five minutes weren't working as soon as she took them off she would start gagging again so then we up the time to ten minutes not to increase the punishment but for extinction of the behavior basically you know I don't get that satisfaction then I start not needing that satisfaction. Uh, for that, I don't need that sensory input. So then, then that slowly but surely goes away over time. And you know, like like I said last time, like Priscilla said last time, it took six months. Yeah. Um, and and she's doing like her normal schedule while these are on. We're not stopping life. Yeah. Um, we just move on with our day. And that was the important part of it being so simple of just putting on a hoodie and zipping it up is that everybody can do it and she can continue to to function as she typically would with a little bit less movement. Yeah. We also started, <clears throat> when we first started it, we were going to give her one opportunity, still not say anything to her, but block her, and then the second time do that, and it just became a game for her mm-hmm. that, oh, they're going to give me two chances. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. So now it's any time her hand passes the plane of her mouth, the tubes go on. Right, so we pretty much have, like, like everything with Abigail, though, we have to go hardcore. Yeah. I mean, it's like all or nothing with that child. Yeah. So SIB, you know, restraints, uh, things like that, these, these are realities that parents with children with autism have to deal with. If you're not familiar with this, um, just know that parents of children with autism, you know, this is, this is something that we face, and we may not face it now, we might face it later, and we may have faced it in the past. Abigail had, she had a harness and a leash. Uh, because she was a danger to herself. You know, when we go to Disney World or somewhere in a crowded place, uh, we had a harness on her with, with a with a tether because, you know, she was a danger to herself. She would run off and jump into any body of water and run out into traffic and everything else. You know, that would be considered a form of restraint. Abigail's car seat is, is also a restraint. She is old enough and big enough and heavy enough that she does not need to be in a car seat anymore. She is in a car seat, you know, not because we feel she's safer in a five-point harness. She's in that car seat because if she wasn't, she would slip out of the seatbelt and, uh, you know, not unbuckle it, just slip out and she'd be all over the car and she'd be in danger to herself 
and everybody else in the car and everybody else on the highway, uh, you know, if she were to cause an accident. I think that's it. It's pretty much the reality of autism. That's that's just one real thing that we're dealing with right now. The yelling is in, is kind of incessant. It's constant. Uh, she's getting, you know, some kind of stimulation there in the vocal cords in the throat when she does it, and it goes hand in hand with the with the gagging. So we've, we've got like a twofer <laughs> going on. When she's not gagging herself, she's driving us crazy <sighs> with the yelling. And it's, you know, it's not like, it looked kind of cute in the last video. Imagine that yelling uh, at a much louder level, uh, constant. Like, For, I mean, I was in the car with her yesterday, yeah. and she had the the restraints on because she was gagging. I had to pull over on 95, and then she starts the yelling. I'm like, well, I'll take the yelling. Yeah, but she, <laughs> At you know, least she's not hurting herself with yeah. the yelling. But she's yelling, you know. It's, but you're just it, like, oh my gosh. It will drive you crazy. <laughs> So we're tired this week. Yeah, we're very tired. But this is, it's not something we haven't beaten before. Nope. Which is good. You know, with it, I think the first time we were, we were like, oh, you know, because it lasted so long. Well, and we didn't know what to do. Yeah, and it was just, uh, man, that was scary. Like, we, you know, we didn't want that to be a forever thing. Yeah. And then just one day, she just stopped. She just stopped. You know, we did the... The behavior declined and declined and declined, you know, as long as we And we've the taken protocol. her to doctors and stuff because some people said, well, maybe she has acid reflux or... Right, yeah, that's know. that's a very good point um, to bring up because we so did... So we have, we have gone the medical route. Yeah, the first um, time around, we did a lot of... Yeah, I mean, we took her to a lot of different um, specialists just to make sure it wasn't something medical because she can't tell us. Yeah. So I want to end this on a positive note. I don't want to end there. Uh, we got a package today, Priscilla and I... Actually, we, we already opened it. I, I opened it first. And I'm like, you got to see this. It's awesome. And uh, so I showed it to her. So we've already seen it. So you're not going to get our you know initial reaction to it. But I got I to gotta show you this. I have to go get it. Okay. Okay. Be right back. Let me do like a cool transition. Sure. Okay. Be right back. I'm back. Okay. Here's what we got. You want to see what we got, son? Come here. Sure. Isaiah has not seen this yet. So this will be his first time. This says, Dear Moss family, my name is Stephanie and my youngest son, two-year-old Joey, has recently been diagnosed with autism. I found your videos a few months back while going through assessments for him. I find your videos very comforting. They show me that we are going to be okay, that our older kids will be fine, and that there will be a balance of caring, caring for and helping Joey as well as the big kids uh, getting what they need from us. My partner John and I started a woodworking company a few years ago called Johavi Woodworking. It's a family business with just with just us running it and our three older kids, John, Hayden, and Victoria. Johavi. Get it? John, Hayden, and Victoria? Love that. Helping out. <laughs> I'm like, huh? <laughs> You're trying to help me read? <laughs> Helping out with what they can when we get busy. A large part of our business is laser engraving. We wanted to send you a gift of a couple of our Christmas ornaments. This is a new thing for me to send a gift to a family I've, I've only ever seen on YouTube. But there's something about your videos combined with the timing I found them that I will forever be grateful to you for. I needed to see them at the time. I did, and I will continue to watch each vlog as they are uploaded. Lastly, one of the first videos I watched, you were talking about the early years. We went on to the assessment the next day with Joey and walked out with an autism diagnosis. I told myself that we left this with the same wonderful boy that we went in with. I needed those words that day because Joey is pretty awesome, and we are lucky to have him just the way he is, and I thank you for that. That gets me. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up the awesome work. Uh, from Stephanie and the Johavi family. P.S. John will kill me if I send you a gift and don't tell you what wood it is. The family ornament is cherry, Abby's ornament is oak, and the pencils are cedar. P.P.S. I use a couple photos as, as examples of the ornaments on our site to show more options. I'd love to add a link to your YouTube page if that's cool with you guys. You know, a lot of people would say, would you please link these, our, our website, in, in your YouTube description. She did not. She added our YouTube channel to her website. That's awesome. I'm going to return the favor, and I will definitely be linking these down below. If you're interested, johavi.com. Definitely go check them out. Show them some love. They got some pictures and stuff on the back of the card as well. And I, like I said, I'll link that down below. Hashtag Moss Squad. <laughs> That's so cool. So we got pencils, 
that say fathering autism on them and ha- hashtag my squad. I'm probably not going to get those in focus because it's so, cool, it's so small, but that's so neat. That is. So we got a whole package of pencils <laughs> and we got an Abbey ornament. Show Isaiah. Look at that. Oh, that's so cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Laser engraved Abbey ornament with puzzle pieces. So pretty. And this is the Fathering Autism Ornament. There you go. Yep. And it has all of our initials. So you guys want to check them out. We should put our Christmas tree up. Oh, no, we're not putting anything (laughs) in there. You guys don't understand. (laughs) Priscilla is, she's a, like, Christmas person. She's she's fanatical. She is all of Whoville wrapped into one person. (laughs) Thank you so very much. Thank you, guys. These are amazing. It's really cool. Um, Really, really amazing. If you guys are looking looking to get, we get... Uh, it's very specific ornaments for each other every year. Um, we do that. It's it's a moss tradition. You know, we get an ornament that kind of kind of signifies the year, something that that designates the year for that person. You know, something significant that happened. Uh, if you guys are looking for an ornament, can't you know this this would be a great option. You get something custom engraved. I would check them out. Um, like I said, I'll leave a link down in the description. So beautiful, so thoughtful. Thank you I, so much. It really means the world to me that that video, I think it was the most important part of that video. Yeah. Was that even with the diagnosis, you know, we were walking out with the same child and that, that you got, that helped you guys. Mm, that's it right there. Love that. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with us and listening to our little story and what's going on in our lives and just pretty much me and Priscilla sitting here talking. No real funny jokes. I probably don't have anything to put after the beep. We always have stuff to put after the beep. You're right, I do. There's always something. As always, thank you so much. We, we will see you the next time that we, we upload a video. I don't know when that's going to be. <laughs> Bye. My hair stays curled. Lucky you, I have to use a ton of product for this kind of beauty. <laughs> I need, and it's like falling. What are you doing? You have a cowlick. That's because she cut it too short in the back. She's fired. I go on Friday and get mine done. What are you going to do to it? Make it look at my roots. What are you talking about? All this is roots. I thought you like got that hairdo so you wouldn't have to worry about it. Not as often. Okay. You get a haircut like every two weeks. I don't even want to hear it. It costs $17. Okay. That equals up to mine. Th- no. Mine's less than 100 You got... Oh. Yeah, remember? I spend more on my hair than you do? Yeah. You're high maintenance. And you use $20 product. I like it takes s- a long time to go through that. You still use it? I don't. Some of us are just naturally cute. Oh, my lord.